When you first launch Godot, you're greeted with the project manager. It might be empty because you haven't made a project yet, or it might have a bunch of projects because you've worked on it already. But if you're new to Godot, there's probably nothing there. It can be a bit overwhelming with the project manager and then the actual Godot editor, so I thought I'd walk you through that. When I first started, I found that there was a whole lot going on visually, but I only really needed to focus in on a few things. So to start off, you'll click New Project. And you'll name your project. Let's just call it Hello World. It's a typical first project name. And you can select where you want it to live. I put things in a place called Workspace. And then I put my games in Game Dev. And then I've got this little uh, workbench area that I put in a bunch of random things. So you're going to select where you want it to go. And then since Workbench isn't the folder where the various project files will go, it's the parent folder, I'm going to click Create Folder here. So that created Hello World, where all the Godot files will live in. Then you have to choose a renderer, and you might be going, well, what do I even choose? It can be changed later, but they may need to be adjusted. What I generally do is mobile or compatibility. It changes, it all depends on your game, right? If you're building a game for desktop only, I would use Forward Plus. Mobile is quite nice, and I believe it still renders to the web. Or compatibility. Generally, I would say compatibility is great for 2D games, especially if you're targeting the web. So let's go ahead and use compatibility or mobile. What it's changing is the rendering engine, but don't worry about that. I would say go with compatibility. If you're going to use Git, that's fine. Or you can click None. It just creates a couple files to help you work with Git and Godot. Click Create and Edit. Now you're greeted with the editor. And it starts by showing you the 3D editor, which is chosen up here. You can also click 2D, and you see the 2D editor. Script is where you're going to write your code. And Asset Lib is where you can download things from you know, assets from other developers to help you with your project. But let's go back to 3D, and I'll walk you through some things some more. Up here, you have the scene area, which you're going to use a lot of. You're going to add nodes to your scenes. Import is when you import a file, and you want to change the attributes of it being imported. I would say not going to worry about that too much yet. File system is where your code, your scenes, your image files, your audio files all live within here. And you can go ahead and create new folders to organize things as needed. And then over here is the inspector. The inspector is huge. You're going to see different properties about what you're working on. Node will let you work with some of the uh, callbacks and groups of the selected node, which we don't have one selected. And then there's a history. Let's go ahead and make a simple Hello World. So click into 2D, and I'm swiping with my trackpad to move around, and I can pinch to zoom in, or you can use the plus and minus keys to zoom in, and you'll see there's this thin purple line that represents the resolution of the game. So if we click Play to start the game, oh, we don't even have a scene, so we can't even do it. Well, let's quick look at these things. So we have a Play button. I'm on Mac, so you can press Command-B to do it. You can pause the running of your game for debugging. You can stop it. You can do a remote debug, so you can start a web build, let's say, and debug it from here. You can run the selected scene, which is really helpful when you're working on a game with multiple scenes and you don't want to boot up to the main menu of your game. You can select a scene, and you can record things in movie maker mode, which is cool, but we're not going to touch on that today. But we're in 2D. We can't run it because we don't have a node. So let's start by making a 2D scene. And we'll just rename it to be Hello World. So you double click it and can rename it. And you'll see over here that our inspector changed because now we have a Hello World. And we're not going to change any of these things yet. But based upon what type the node is, the available options in the inspector will change. So just a heads up there. But you now see if we click into node, we have the sub tabs, signals, and groups. Groups, a little advanced for right now. Don't worry about it. Signals, quite useful, but still, don't worry about those quite yet. They'll, they'll be useful, though. And uh, there are events that happen.
that you can connect to code to run at a certain time. So we have our hello world scene. I'm going to save it with command s, and I'm going to name it hello underscore world dot tscn, which is the Godot scene extension. I name them all under all lowercase with separated with underscores. That's called snake casing. Godot does that by default, so I do that, and that's fine with me. So I save it, and you'll see down here in the file system, we've got our hello world. So if you double click it, it's already open, so that's okay. What if we double click the SVG? Hmm, nothing happens. Okay. Well, what if we run our game? So hit play. It says no main scene has ever been defined. Select one. So let's select current. It makes it so that when we run our full game, it runs, and it's just an empty 2D scene. You'll see the name of it, hello world, and you'll see debug. So let's go ahead and close that. And then let's run this run current scene. Does the same thing. So right now you could just do either, but let's go ahead and close it. Now adding our image that Godot provides, they provide this SVG scalable vector graphic file. You can just drop it in there and then you can drag it around to change where it lives. So let's go ahead and hit play again. And now that's there. And you can see it added it as icon because it's named icon and it even capitalized it. If we go into the inspector, we'll see more information about that node. You can see the texture that was applied is our SVG file, and you could change it to be a different image or a different type of texture. For now, just leave it as it is. Offset, eh, don't worry about that. You could add animations if you want it, but we're not gonna. And we'll see transform here with one change. Click to expand it and you'll see that its position has been changed. So let's click reset and that puts it back to zero, zero. And it did it in our running game. That's one of the really cool things about Godot is you can change things and it updates automatically in the game. Let's see if I can make this show you. So I dragged it over here and it updated it here. That's really nice especially when you're building out interfaces or testing things out quickly. You'll see as we change it, changes it in the inspector, we could change it ourselves by typing in different values. You can even change those with code, which we'll do in a second. Scale changes how large it is. And so the inspector is where you can visually edit things and then eventually we'll connect code to it. Now, if we go and Let's make another scene actually, because I think that will illustrate the difference between scenes. So click here, right click, and go to new scene. We'll make it a 2D scene, and we'll say, hello world two, we'll call it a sequel. I like making the root name uppercase with, uh, without the underscores, because Godot does that by default too. So click okay. Now we have hello world two and hello world. So we have hello world, I clicked to open that. Now we have hello world too, there's nothing there. What if we put two icons? Save it. If we click the rerun, okay, it shows our one Godot image. But what if we wanna just run this scene? Ah, now you can run the scene and see the difference. So if you were working on maybe a settings area and you were wanted to rerun it, you could just run that scene. But then if you want to test your whole game, you can press the play icon. And there's a way to switch between scenes, which we'll get to as part of scripting. And we'll add a button to switch to that. But let's go back to just hello world. And also real quick aside, when you have multiple scenes open, you can switch between them in these tabs. And you can even create a new scene by pressing the plus button and selecting what you want. If we made a 3D scene, it would switch to this 3D view mode, but we're not worrying about that yet. So over here in Hello World, well, let me hit the brakes. So you're adding nodes to your game. We'll add a node called button. So when you click the plus button or on a node and you do Command A or Control A and do Create New Node, it shows this new pop-up interface where you're going to select the nodes you're going to add. There's a whole lot of them. And you'll want to read the docs to the documentation to learn more about them. For us, we're going to do node TD, node 2D. No, we're not. We're going to do button, actually. So that's different. And that, I think, is control. And then there is a button 
somewhere. I'll find it. There we go, a base button. You could also just type button, which is what I often do, and it filters them. So we'll click create, and it adds a new button. And you can see it's selected over here, but wow, it sure is hard to see. So click away from it. Oh, there's nothing there. Let's click back in our button, and in the inspector, we can add our test, our text. So we'll call it switch to Godot. We'll say hello, Godot to scene. You don't have to do this if you don't want. You know, I'm just walking you through this. You can click and drag it to change how it looks. And let's just put it here. It doesn't look so great, but that's okay. We'll run our game, and you can see our buttons there. So you're composing your game with buttons, or you're composing your game with nodes, whether they're images that you might control, or maybe they're buttons that you can press. There's so many nodes, way beyond the scope of this. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and add our first bit of code. And there's more to the UI that I can't just cover in this one shorter video, but there are ways to move things, rotate them, scale them, snapping to pixels. There's more, there's a lot more advanced things, but for now, I just want to give you a sense of some of the basics. So if we go to Hello World and you can click this icon here, attach a new script. We're going to write it in GD script. It's going to inherit from Node2D, which it is. Generally, I don't change these things in the path. I just leave it as is. Go ahead and click Create. Now it switches to the script editor. You can get back to the 2D editor just by up here, but switch to script. And we'll see our code here is here. You might not see these type signatures because I have a special setting enabled in my editor to do that. But it creates, when it's a Node2D, a ready and a process function. These functions Ready is run once when all the children nodes have been successfully added to the added to the running scene. And then process is called every frame. And we have something called print, where we can output something to the command line. We'll just do hello world. Save that. Now if we run our game, you'll see down here in the debugger, it's printing hello world every single frame the game's running. And that's a lot. You know, that's, that's not something you generally want to do, but just wanted to illustrate that. So in the script area is where you write GD script. GD script is a lot like Python. And let's go ahead and do some interesting, uh, interesting things here. We'll say you can reference nodes, children, child nodes by using the dollar sign. And you can say icon. So now we have access to this icon here, and we can change it with our code. And let's say rotate, and let's rotate it by delta. Delta is the amount of time elapsed since the previous frame. So we'll rotate it by delta, every frame, every, every process call. So now our icon's rotating. So we've written a bit of code to interact with the nodes that exist in our scene. That's a real basic and good piece of functionality. And, but clicking our button doesn't do anything. Okay, well, let's go ahead and wire that up. So let's go back to 2D so we can land it. We'll click on our button, and we'll go to node. And in signals, because it's a button, there is some signals that exist. Toggle, button up, button down, we'll do press. So if you click that and click connect or double tap it, you can then select where you want, when that event, when that signal happens, pressed, what code gets called? Hello world, we already have a script there, and it already smartly names it on button pressed. So you just click connect, and you'll see that we have some code already here. So we'll delete our pass up here, clean things up. We're not using ready, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then let's do print debug, and we'll say button pressed. Okay, go ahead and run that. Click the button, and down here, you'll see that some text was logged because the button was pressed. So now we've used the signal, and we click here, we compose things from the GUI, connect things to the code, then we go to the script editor and change things. This is the flow, right? This is the general flow of Godot. Is you're building nodes, you're connecting them to things, um, you're visually laying them out as needed, and then you're writing code to interact with them. Now let's go ahead and 
make it actually switch our scene. So there's a couple ways to do that. Um, I think what we want to say is get tree. <clears throat> and we'll go change scene to file. And it automatically gives us some options here. So we'll do change scene to file, and then we'll do our hello world scene. Save that, go ahead and run this scene. Now if we click switch to hello Godot 2 scene, it switches to our other scene. And we still have our debug code there, and that's helpful. And now we're it's running this scene in our game. And there's no way to get back, so if you wanted a way to get back and switch between scenes, you could add a button to do that yourself. And um, that's the basic workflow of Godot and the 2D. There's more to it, of course. There's ways to edit animations and audio and all of those things. But I just wanted to give you that brief overview of you're moving around in the 2D view. You've got your scene, your file system. You've got your inspector and your node. And you can see the history of all the things we've done. I don't find myself looking at that too much. You can also expand this if you want, which can be helpful when you're coding. Um, but that's the basics of the Godot 2D scene editor and flow. And um, just thought I'd walk you through that. Not a ton of shortcuts and hotkeys that I use in 2D mode, but then in 3D mode, there is a bit of that. So I'll make a separate video for that. All right. Thanks. Hope that was helpful. See ya. Bye.